This video is going to show you how you can add more plantable or even entertaining space to your property. If you have a sloping hillside on your property that's unusable, stick around. If you just want to raise planter bed uh, against the back wall in your backyard, or you want to create raised vegetable beds that don't rot and have to be replaced every few years, this video is for you. When we moved into this house last summer, the area on the south side of our house was perfect for a vegetable garden. Except it was an unplantable hill sloping in two different directions, and it was going to have to be tamed with terraces to be able to plant anything meaningful. So I set to work with a tiller, a shovel, and a rake, and I cleared as much of the land as I could. I quickly realized that more heavy equipment was needed. Fortunately, a new friend out of the blue offered his tractor and man hours to help me. Bill was a godsend. I couldn't have done this without him. He was able to take a hill and carve out three terraces just like I wanted. Then it was up to me to figure out how to hold these terraces up and make them stable and beautiful. I found a local company, RCP Block, who, unbeknownst to me, had provided all the blocks for the walls that were currently at our house when we moved in. They delivered the materials and then it was time for me to get to work. And get to work I did. Now I'm going to provide a list of all the tools and materials down in the video description so you can actually just uh, go there and get all of that information. I also want to tell you up front, this is going to be a very detailed video. Don't let that scare you away into thinking that this is a complicated process. I got started on this project with 20% of what I'm going to give to you. And things turned out great. This really is a simple DIY job, um, but I just want to take some of the things I learned through the process and relay them to you to make your process even simpler and a little more streamlined. But don't take the amount of instructions that I'm giving to make this something harder than it is. The first thing you need to do is mark a line where you want the front face of your wall to be. This can be done with two stakes and heavy duty twine. It's important to know that your wall will be buried six inches in the ground. So if you plan on a two foot tall wall from the ground up, your wall will actually be two and a half feet tall from its base. The first six inches will be under the soil level. Now I had the ground excavated to the six inch deeper level than it will actually be because I'm gonna be building up with compost and decomposed granite. Then you want to dig a trench about six to eight inches deep. So if I hadn't excavated the area six inches deeper than I needed it, I would be digging a 12 inch deep trench. The trench will be filled with gravel to create a stable, well-draining base for the wall. Now in this trench, you're going to want about four inches of space in front of the stone or in front of the twine at this point and four inches behind the stone. So the trench will end up being about 18 inches wide as these stones are about 12 inches wide. You also want to dig the trench a few inches longer than the wall on each end. This is just going to give some extra space for gravel on both ends of the wall. There are two ways to dig the trench. I'll show you both ways, but I'll tell you up front, I preferred the second way after trying both. The first way is just to start digging. Removing soil, I dug along where the front of the trench would go, about four inches in front of the line. And I did this so I could remove the twine so I didn't chop it up, because I know me. Working in about six to eight foot sections, just start removing dirt and leveling the bottom. I knew my shovel was 12 inches long, so I needed to have the trench about half shovel deep. Once I got it that deep and that long, I would rake it smooth and tamp it down with my feet and then use a six foot level to make sure the section was level, adding or removing dirt as needed. If you don't have a six foot level, you can use a shorter level on a six foot two by four. Once that section was level, I would work on another six to eight foot section and repeat the process until the full length was finished. Okay, the second way is to start by digging a hole the width and depth it should be and about the same length as the width, basically a square. Once you feel you're at the right depth, tamp the bottom down and measure to make sure. 
add or remove soil to make it the right depth and always make sure the bottom is tamped down. Now working with that square as your guide, move along the length of the string taking out one section at a time to the proper width and depth. When you hit the six feet mark, start with the level and continue all the way to the end. Something about this work was very satisfying. Just seeing where the wall was going to be, it was the first bit of real order to this untamed space. Now, whichever method you use, once the trench is done and leveled, it's time to add the gravel. You can use a regular wheelbarrow, or if you can find a power wheelbarrow, it will make the work easier. Now, I had an amazing viewer loan me this one. Thanks, Russ. I'm filling the six inch deep trench to the top with the gravel. And if you're digging a 12 inch deep trench, then fill it up six inches. The other six inches will be your first course of brick or stone. I might add at this point that the gravel was from RCP as well. Make sure you get the correct gravel by getting it from your stone company or asking them what the correct gravel size should be. Use a rake and your six foot level to make sure the entire length of the trench is level. Do the little tamping dance down the length of the trench back and forth to make sure the gravel is settled in. Then level again. In case you haven't figured it out, the level is now your new best friend. Once the trench is filled and level, it's time to build your first course or run of stone. This will be a two foot tall wall and each stone or course is six inches tall. So including the first course that will be underground, I'll be putting in five courses. All right, to simplify things, basically what we've done so far is we have dug a trench, leveled it, we've filled it with gravel and leveled the gravel. That's it. Now it's time to lay the first stone. And I just wanna tell you, this stone is rough, really rough. So you definitely wanna get some leather gloves. I went through three pairs during this project. If you took out your twine to keep from chopping it, it needs to go back in. This is your guide for the front of your wall. Line the first stone up with the twine, but it shouldn't touch the twine, just as close as it can be without touching. If it touches it, it could move the twine just enough to mess up the straightness of the wall, especially after repeated bricks touching it. The twine is your guide for the length of the wall. The level is your guide for, well, the levelness of the wall. When you set the stone in place, use a shorter level to level the front to back and side to side. Sometimes just applying downward pressure and a rocking motion is all that's needed. Once that first stone is level, go grab the next one. What's great about the Keystone product from RCP is that it comes already assorted. If you look at this wall, it looks like there are multiple size stones in different colors. Technically, there are three colors and three sizes of stone, but each stone has a straight edge and an angled edge. What that does is helps the pieces lock together, but it also creates the look of multiple size stones. There's really only three size stones, but the front and back of each stone is a different length. So right here, it looks like six sizes of stone. And again, they come pre-assorted on the palette, so you don't even have to worry about it. You just take them off and put them out. And I really love the natural look this gives to the wall. I wanna take 20 seconds right here and thank RCP Block & Brick for sponsoring this project and for giving you guys a discount. RCP carries a full line of Keystone products to fit every style you might want to create. If you are in or near San Diego County, they have six locations where you can look at all types of stone and get advice for your project. RCP was kind enough to offer a huge discount on any product they carry other than artificial turf. Next level viewers can get 10% off your product for your project. That is big. If you're not in the area, you can go online and look for your local Keystone dealer. And there is no perfect way to uh, assemble the wall or line up the stones. I tried to go large, medium, small, large, medium, small for the base. Um, on the upper courses, it may not work out so perfectly. And I'll tell you why when we get there. Right now, we're just worried about the first course. 
When you bring the next stone over, you want to make sure that it is level front to back and side to side, but also level with the previous stone you laid. I told you the level would be your new best friend. I'm going to give you some good news and bad news. Bad news first. The first course of stone is tedious because you have to level each stone and then level it in relationship to the stone next to it. It takes a lot of time. The first course of the wall took me several hours. However, the good news is that is a level base. All of the following courses go on just like that. I finished, it took me several hours for the first course. I finished the next four courses in one hour total. So keep moving along stone by stone, making sure each stone is lined up with, but not touching the twine, level front to back, side to side, and level with its neighbor. If one side of the stone is too high, lift it up, move some stone, some gravel out of the way, lay it back down. If one side is too low, a small garden trowel worked well to jam more gravel underneath it slowly without raising the level too quick. A rubber mallet worked as well to smack down a side that is slightly higher than you need. So keep at it, making it as perfect as you can, knowing that once the first course is done, your whole wall is three quarters finished and the rest is easy. Once that first course is finished, you're going to do three things before moving on to the second course. First, you're going to stand back and look at what an amazing job you just did. And probably if you're like me, stand there and wonder, wow, I did that and look how perfectly level it looks. The second thing you're going to do is fill all of the large holes in the stones with gravel just to right below the top of the hole. This is gonna further stabilize the wall and help lock the stones together. The next thing you're gonna do is put in these yellow pins. These pins help to line up the next course with the course below it. They help lock it into place and keep the stones from moving back and forth or front to back. So this part goes into the stone below it and the top part of it fits into the, the stone above it. There's a little groove on the bottom that this fits into. Go right down the line, putting them into the center small holes. It's important to know that as you're working your way down the second course, you'll probably end up removing some of these pins because they're not all going to line up perfectly. Now you're ready for the next course of stone. Start by lining up the edge of the first stone with the one below it. Then keep going right across. The only rule here is you don't want to have the space between the brick line up with the space between the two bricks below it. Not only does this make the wall less stable if you do this too much, but it just doesn't look good to the eye. Now there were a few times where I just couldn't help it. So don't stress if every once in a while it happens, but avoid it if you can. This can sometimes mean you need to remove the last couple of stones that you laid and stagger the sizes a little differently. Once you reach the end of the second course, put the gravel in the large holes, put the pins in, and you're off to the next course. Keep going until you've reached the desired wall height. At that point, fill the large holes with gravel, but you won't be putting the pins in. Now it's time to put on the capstones. These are applied with a masonry adhesive. This stuff is super strong and doesn't take much. Make sure to line up the back of the capstones with the back of the wall. The front of the capstone will overhang the front of the wall just a bit. That's it. Stand back and admire your wall. I know at this point you're going to think to yourself, that was simpler than I ever thought it would be. But you're not quite done yet. At this point, you've just got a wall standing out in the middle of nothing. We need to backfill. But it's not just as simple as filling in dirt along the back side of the wall. We still need a four inch gap between the soil and the wall. And that's going to be filled in with gravel. It does two things. It keeps the drainage next to the wall good. Drains it right down into the gravel that's underneath the wall and out one end. 
it also filters the mud from the, the soil behind it. When you water it, you don't want that mud running out the front of your wall. And so that gravel will act as a filter for that. But how do we get a four inch run of gravel against the dirt or between the dirt and the wall? A couple of two by fours or four by fours. Four by fours are a little more stable. Just set them up like that. Get a scrap piece of plywood that's roughly the same height as the wall. Pile your soil behind here to hold that up. And then dump your gravel in the space between the wall and the, the plywood. And then it takes a little muscle, but once that's filled in, you can slowly shimmy this up and you'll have your four inch thick layer of gravel before you hit the soil. So a quick word on corners. If you're doing a, a straight wall between two other walls, you're not gonna have to deal with that. But if you have to build in an encasement for soil back here, whether you're doing retaining walls like this, whether you're doing a, a raised planter or a raised bed for vegetables, you're gonna have corners. I went the easy way. I built the wall straight out here, and then I built another wall behind it. Now I'm sure there are ways, ask your RCP rep or any of your, or wherever you get your stone, and see if there's ways that you can mathematically figure out a way to hook these together to, and join them together. Um, for me, it wasn't a huge deal. I think it looks just fine like it is, but if you wanna go that extra step, by all means. You can actually use this exact same process on a freestanding raised bed, just like this one. Now this one I didn't do, this happened to be here when we moved in, but it's gonna create a bed that is beautiful. It is going to outlast any type of wood product or metal product. And something like this can be done in a weekend. You still just have to trench accordingly in whatever shape you want, and you're not limited by straight lines. The Keystone product can be curved in pretty much whatever layout or configuration you want. We are almost finished with this project and it has really made a mark on our new property and I'm loving the way it looks. In just a week or so, I will finally be able to begin planting my dream vegetable garden. Thanks for coming along on this journey and I want to encourage you, if you have a hillside that needs taming to give you more planting space, this in my opinion is the easiest and best looking option there is. Let me know what you think of the finished product and let me know if you have a use for something like this. I'll see you guys next time.